a historic, very early morning session on Capitol Hill this morning where negotiators in Congress did approve the most sweeping overhaul of the financial system since the Great Depression. They've come to agreement, but is it really the final word? We're going to get some perspective here from Washington Executive Editor Al Hunt. So Al, it's a, it's a big morning, at least that we have some sort of agreement, but President Obama really needed to win. Can we count financial reform as one of them at this point? Sure we can, Margaret. We don't know what the exact effects of this bill will be. Will it be a good or bad time? We'll tell, but for Obama, it's a huge victory. This measure is very close to what he proposed. If anything, a little bit stronger. He also is going to, I think, find this much easier to sell to the American people as a victory than he has found the health care measure. So he's declared this to be a victory key that he has it in hand, headed to the GA and to the G20 this weekend. But can we still consider it a true win next week, right? We still have to see a vote on this. Well, the House is a sure deal. It'll pass the House. The Senate never makes anything easy. It requires 60 <laughs> votes. Uh, they got four Republicans last time. They have to keep at least three of them. One of the deals that they made, uh, they being the conferees in the last waning hours, was to was to water down the ban on proprietary trading, so it's no longer a ban but a limitation, in part for Scott Brown, the senator from Massachusetts, the Republican. Uh, they think that will assure his vote, and they need every vote they can get. I think the odds are that they'll win uh, passage in the Senate, but it may require uh, some hurdles before we quite get there. Yeah, this bill's going to also require some reading. We only, you know, got it at 540 this morning. I don't think so many of us even know what's in there quite yet beyond the, the key issues. Uh, but give me a sense of what this does for the president in terms of negotiation at the G8 and G20. You, you normally see some kind of deliverable, right, coming out of a session like this. So what are we going to get from Toronto? I think mainly bragging rights. Some of the Europeans have moved separately on issues, some of which go beyond what this bill goes on matters like taxation uh, of banks. But I think the president can say, all right, we really have moved seriously on this. And in some areas, the Europeans and others uh, are behind us. So it's mainly bragging rights. Well, I want to switch gears here uh, because I know you had a very key interview <laughs> that we can all watch on political capital tonight at 7 p.m. You spoke with the man now in charge of uh, doling out the funds from this escrow account uh, for BP, Ken Feinberg. Yeah, I did, Margaret. And what Ken Feinberg wants to do is he wants to get money out quickly. He really wants to provide that relief, $5 billion over the first year, and he really wants to move it out uh, very expeditiously. He also said when asked about the danger of fraud that he wants to have the Justice Department uh, looking over to make sure that uh, they reduce or minimize the uh, prospects for fraud. Okay, I think we have a bite ready. Let's listen in. None have been denied. Now, we don't know how many are in limbo. Uh, BP, to its credit, to its credit, is paying claims that are eligible. I'll have to decide whether a claim is eligible or ineligible and how much should be paid. So uh, Ken Feinberg is also leaving his job as, uh, as Pazar here. Did you uh, talk to him any bit about FINRAY? Uh, I did, Margaret. He thinks on the question of outsized executive compensation that while Wall Street still doesn't, as he put it, get it, uh, he thinks that there's going to be lots of other pressures, including the legislation, including some of what he did, including public pressures, so they're at least going to modify uh, some of the compensation uh, largesse in the future. Wow. So what should we be watching for? What do you have in your notebook here, Al? Margaret, this is a personal note. Uh, one of the, the great financial angels of the Democratic Party, the most successful real estate magnet in America in the last 50 years, Walter Shorenstein of San Francisco, died last night. He was 95. He was a pal of mine. He was a confidant of presidents. Uh, he was a benefactor of universities like Harvard. But he never forgot his humble beginnings. Uh, he was a real force and lived a great life. All right. It's a, a, a nice way to remember him, Al. We'll watch for your commentary and we'll watch for political capital tonight at 7 p.m.